Hi, welcome to your first ukulele lesson. So uh, this is going to be kind of a stand-in video just in case you miss the class or something like that on your first lesson. So this can help you get caught up. Lesson number one. So we're going to start from the very bottom, the absolute basics of music. And from there, I'm going to explain this instrument and how it makes sense. So a lot of people when they begin teaching, they might just jump straight into getting you playing chords and everything. And that's a very nice way to start playing the uke. Um, it's always fun to jump straight into songs. But the problem with teaching people from the first lesson that way is that there are a bunch of different traps and problems that they'll encounter if somebody doesn't explain the fundamentals of music to them beforehand. So things like even tuning the instrument so that it will sound even okay when you play it. That's a big one. So it, there's some kind of lofty concepts happening um, when you try to tune an instrument that you'll need to have explained to you before in order for it to make any sense. So it's very easy to get lost and end up tuning strings to the wrong notes and stuff like that. So I'm gonna try to explain it from the bottom up to give you a chance of understanding what's happening when you're trying to tune. Okay, so the way we can make a start on that is I've got some slides here that I want to show you. So if we were to start from the absolute basics, the fundamental elements of music, we would have to start with a thing called the musical alphabet. So the musical alphabet is very similar to the English alphabet, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. The difference is it goes back to A and starts again. So it would go A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and then it would start again, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and it would keep doing that higher and higher and higher. Now the same actually applies the other direction. You would work backwards down the alphabet that way. So A would become G, F, etc., all the way down the alphabet. So if you were if you were to read the alphabet from left to right, it would go like this, and that would be said to be going up along the musical alphabet. So up in pitch would sound like, whoops, would sound like this. So that would, you can hear that that sound is getting higher. So it's on its way up. That would be going. So the sound going up like that, that would be reading from left to right or A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Um, and that means that if we were to go this way along the neck, that would be going up the alphabet. So A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A. Okay. And if I was to go this direction down the neck, that would be going down the alphabet. And that would be going A, whoop, sorry, A, G, F, E, D, C, B, A. Now you don't have to worry too much about the notes. It's just the concepts that I want. Going up the neck goes up the alphabet and going down the neck goes down the alphabet. Okay. Now, before I move on, I should probably explain these in-between notes. So all these ones in between the letters. And um, those guys are sharps. So this symbol here, see that little hashtag kind of symbol, Octothorpe. <laughs> There's lots of names for that symbol, but that one is called a sharp symbol. Um, and when you put that beside one of the letters, it means it's going to be up one from that letter. So if you put this symbol beside an A note, it would be up one from A. And if you put it beside a C note, it would be up one from C or a D note, it would be up one from D, etc. So that is what it would look like if you played every single note along the alphabet. It would go A, A sharp, B, C, C sharp, D, D sharp, E, F, F sharp, G, G sharp, and then it would all start again with A. Okay. Now, that's what we're going to work with for the first, well, long while, long time. We're going to work with just natural notes, these guys, and sharps. So F, F sharp, 
G, G sharp. You can probably see, you might be wondering what this stuff is down the bottom then. Um, I wouldn't get too hung up on this, but it's I'm going to explain it just in a basic sense. So there is basically an opposite to a sharp, because uh, sharp meant up one. This symbol down here, this sort of funny looking lowercase b symbol, this guy is a flat symbol, and that means down one. So if this symbol is put beside a letter, it means down one from it. So this happens to be a B note and a flat, a B flat, and that will be one below B, one down from B. So this means that these two notes here, for all intents and purposes at this point in time, are exactly the same thing. So A sharp and B flat will be the same note on your instrument. So if this one here, if I hit this string that's farthest away from me, the one down there, that's called the first string, and it makes an A note when I hit it open, if I just don't hold anything down. So that there is A. If I held down the next note, that would be an A sharp note. And if I held down the next one, that would be a B note. And so we had A, A sharp, and B. So just to explain what I was talking about a second ago, A sharp, this note here in between A and B, I could describe it as A sharp, or I could also describe it as B flat. Okay, so A sharp and B flat would be the same thing. Um, so we're not going to use much of the, the flat symbol for a while. It doesn't really come up until later. We're just going to use sharps. So. It's important to understand or to know what this is because it might actually show up on your tuner, the flat symbol. So if it shows up uh, when you're trying to tune the instrument, that you won't be totally lost. Okay, but we're just going to stick with these sharps because it can be a little bit confusing at the start to move between sharps and flats. So we're just going to use sharps. So that would be A, A sharp, B, C, C sharp, D, D sharp, E, F, F sharp, G, G sharp, and A. And if that seems a little bit too much to remember right now, that's okay. You'll get familiar with it over time. So, we're going to go on to the next slide, where we find out the different notes. We're going to spend a little bit of time on the musical alphabet. So this is all the notes that you're going to be dealing with. And it can be a little bit tricky to remember it because they're not exactly the same. You don't get a sharp for every single letter. Basically, there's two instances in the musical alphabet where there's no sharp. So we're going to try to come up with a way of remembering this. So this would be A, A sharp, B. Now this is the first instance where there's no sharp. So you're not going to find a sharp between the letters B and C. There's no sharp, they just go directly into each other. So that would, so far what we did there would look like this. A, A sharp, B, C. So there'd be no B sharp. Um, the way that most people, the way that most people, the way I usually tell people uh, to remember this is if they've ever seen an episode of The Simpsons where Homer gets into a barbershop quartet and they decide to call themselves the B sharps. So if you remember that episode, that'll make this easy to remember. The joke in that is that there's no B sharp. Ha ha. <laughs> so the next one, the next time this shows up where there's no sharp is between E and F. So those are the two exceptions. There's no B sharp and there's no E, e sharp. So B sharp, E sharp are the two that don't exist. Okay, so we're going to take a look at this. If we call it out as we go, so A, A sharp, B, C, C sharp, D, D sharp, E, F, F sharp, G, G sharp, and A again. All right, that's the musical alphabet. That's kind of like learning the periodic table of music 
So these are the elements that we're going to be working with. Okay. We've actually already covered this. I explained it. But if you want to reread it, there it is. It's just explaining how they were both. A sharp and B flat would be the same note. Okay. So this is how it would map out onto the ukulele if we looked at the first string. And again, the first string is the one that's farthest away from you, presuming that you're playing right-handed. If you're playing left-handed, it might be the other way around, but I'm just gonna assume everybody's playing right-handed. And by playing right-handed, that means that your, uh, your left hand holds the neck and your right hand will be the one strumming or hitting the body. Okay, so if you're holding it like this, then that string that's farthest away from my face down there that would be the A string and we already went through A, A sharp, B, C well if you continue all the way up the neck that would go C sharp, D, D sharp, E, F, F sharp, G, G sharp and A would all start again A now in this particular uke, I don't have any more frets. But if I was using a bigger uke, I could keep going and the alphabet would keep going. Okay. So if we look at the other strings, we see the same system, same process. The only difference is that, say for example, the second string, it doesn't start on an A note. It starts on a different note, but it's the same musical alphabet. So if we started on E, the next one would be F, F sharp, G, G sharp, A, A sharp, B, C, C sharp, D, D sharp, E. And if you have more frets, it would keep going. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. So we'll move on to the next string. That would be, I would call it the third string and that's third from the bottom. So some people intuitively count from their perspective down. That's not what we're gonna be doing. So we go from the farthest string away is called the first string. So we address that first. So first string, second string, third string. So this string here, the third string. When we play that open, which just means not holding anything down, that makes a C note. So if we have a look here, we start on C, and then we would play C sharp, D, D sharp, E, F, F sharp, G, G sharp, A, A sharp, B, C. Okay, and if you do this exercise where you play along and you name out the notes as you go, that's really helpful for learning the fretboard and learning the alphabet. So learning your musical alphabet. Okay, and the last string here is called a G string. Now there's a couple of different variations of ukulele and on the different variations, that string can either sound high or it can sound low. But in most of those instances, it's still playing a G note. It's just some of the ukuleles play a G note that sounds really high like it's up here and some of them play it so it sounds like it's really low but either way it's still gonna be a G note so I can explain all that stuff later but for the moment just remember this one should be a G when it's open so that'd be G G sharp A A sharp etc all the way up the neck Okay, so that's how the ukulele is supposed to look or sound. Right, um, I, should, I suppose I should explain the, uh, the tuning notes next. So people have all kinds of ways of remembering these notes, what the ukulele is supposed to sound like with all of the strings played open. So if you were to strum from the near from your side, from near your face downwards, it should sound something like that. Okay, and those notes should be G, C, E, A. 
or if you went from the first string A, E, C, G Hopefully that makes sense um, Yeah, people have lots of ways of remembering these notes Personally, the one that I use or find very memorable is one that goes G, C, E, A So that's from near me downwards and the, the way I remember it is George Clooney eats apples. And as long as you can remember the image of George Clooney eating an apple, George Clooney eats apples. You should be able to remember this. Okay, so what are the tuning notes of the uke? Well, if you're strumming from this side down, they go George Clooney eats apples. Okay. Right, so this is the next concept. What is happening when you're tuning? So, when you're tuning a string, this goes for any stringed instrument, um, you're either going to tighten the string or loosen the string. So you use these, um, this has kind of funny tuning heads. These tuning heads are a little bit funny. So I'm going to use one that's a bit more conventional looking. Um, yeah, I suppose this would be the most conventional looking one. So you probably notice these white or black plastic uh, little tuning heads. Okay, so if you turn it one direction, it's going to go up in pitch. And if you turn it the other direction, it's going to go down in pitch. And that corresponds to whether the string is being tightened, it goes up, or loosened, it goes down. So one way goes up, one way goes down. And the question most people ask then is like, how do I know? And the answer is, turn it and find out. <laughs> so in order to hear anything, you're going to need to hit the string as you do it. Otherwise, you're not going to hear any sound. So you won't be able to tell if it's going up or going down. So what you do is you try to identify one string. So any string. In this instance, we're going to go for the G string. So if I follow the G string up along this, follow the string to the machine head here, the capstan, and then its corresponding tuning head. So I followed it all the way up along here to that one. So I now know that the this G string is this one here. And if I turn it one way, it's gonna go up, and one way it's gonna go down. But I won't know unless I'm making sound. Okay, so that's the basic function of what we're about to do. And I'm just going to grab an electronic tuner so you can see it. Okay, so hopefully you can see that okay. Tell you what, I'm going to stop sharing so you can see. Right, so if we have a look at this thing... Okay, so that one's actually in tune. It's supposed to be a G note, and it's telling me, yes, it's a G note. You see the little pointy bit that's in the middle, and it's lighting up green. Now, if this was to be a bit too low, it would go below that. And if it was too high, it would go above. So it's kind of like the speedometer on a car. Like if you were to rev the accelerator it would go up and if you have to let go of the accelerator it would go down it's kind of like that movement and you want to land it just in the middle and some tuners even change color when you get it right not all of them but some of them okay there you go around there almost So you notice how, as I was doing it, I had to hit that string and let it kind of ring out. Hit it every so often so that this is getting signal, it's getting sounds that it can show you. Alright, so you can see it's centered and change color. Now, 
this would be where I should explain what is happening in terms of notes. So most, for most people in most instances, you can just stick on one of these electronic tuners or use an app of the equivalent. Like if, I'm sure if you look in an app store or whatever you have on your phone that you'll find something called ukulele tuner that will work pretty well. Um, in my experience, there is one quite good one on uh, Android on the Play Store. You see that one there? See that one that's called Ukulele Tuner? Not the one with the speedometer, the one that's kind of a teal color, that's the shape of a headstock. That guy there is quite good. Um, it's a free app. Um, it's quite good. But the advantage that an electronic tuner, like this guy, would have over an app is that um, apps use the microphone in your phone to detect the sound. And that can detect any sound in the room. So if there's any music or even anything close to the sound of music in the room, the app is going to get distracted by that sound and it's going to display that sound. Whereas these ones, they work off vibration and a sensor so that somebody could be playing some quite loud music next to me. And if I go use my tuner like this, it's clipped on the headstock it's still going to give me an accurate reading for my instrument, not for the sound in the room. So that would be a big advantage that an electronic tuner would have over an app. But that's your call. Um, these things, they're not, they're, not, they're not too expensive, so they're worth investing in if you're gonna keep playing music. Um, now the thing is, most of these are what's called a multi-instrumental tuner. So they work for different instruments so long as you use the correct preset. So you can use this thing for a guitar, violin, bass, all kinds of different instruments to tune them. And that, that's great, as long as you have those instruments, but it means that you can get a little bit lost in the presets for the instruments. Now, they're not, they're not a very complex piece of electronics, but, um, and I say that because most of them have one button on them. So it's a one button device, but they hide a lot inside that one button. So if my tuner was turned off, it would look like this. You can see that I've got one orange power button. So if I hold that down, it turns it on. Okay, now it's on. So if you look closely, you can probably see down the very bottom of the screen, the letter C. Now that means that the tuner is set to the chromatic setting. Now chromatic just means that it'll display any note that you play. So if you played a C, it would show a C. If you played a C sharp note, it would show a C sharp note. But some of the other presets, they won't do that. They'll basically go, la 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 la, I'm not listening, I'm not listening, I only want to hear a C. And you could be playing a C sharp and it's just like ignoring you. <laughs> so that can be a bit annoying. So if you go onto one of the incorrect um, presets that can really cause you trouble when you try to tune so you have to check that your tuner is on the correct preset now if you're playing ukulele or you're trying to tune a ukulele there's only two presets that would be good for you one is this one chromatic so set that one to chromatic there and the other one would be ukulele and even ukulele has some downsides it has a few upsides but it also has some downsides so personally if the person I, if I know the person understands the musical alphabet how it works a a sharp b c c sharp d d sharp e f f sharp g g sharp a if I know that the person understands that idea I would tell them use chromatic all the time um, it just cuts out some problems that exist on the ukulele setting or if you like the ukulele one and you like the informa the extra information that gives you, you can use ukulele. But if you have a look here, I'm going to cycle through these presets. So if I tap this power button, see the way it changed the letter. Now it says G. So that would be the guitar setting. If I tap it again, it'll go to the next one. B, 
bass, if I tap the next one, violin, and if I tap again, U for ukulele. Okay, so this one has a ukulele setting. It's going to work mostly like the chromatic but it'll be, give me a little bit more detail. So, I'm currently hitting my fourth string, the one that's nearest to me, and that's supposed to be a G note. If you remember, George Clooney eats apples. So, that's a G. Now, it looks a little bit different than the chromatic one did. You can see it's not just the letter of the note and the preset. It has this number four. Now, what that number four is, it's telling me that it thinks it's the fourth string on a ukulele, which it is. I'm playing the fourth string, the G string, and that's right. And if I was to hit the third string, Clooney, C, oh, you can see I'm a little bit out of tune. Tighten it. go to the next one, E eats, you can see it says the number two, second string, that's correct, and then it thinks I'm playing the first string. Okay, and there'll be an A. Right. Right, so that would be how an electronic tuner works. Um, I personally would prefer to use the chromatic setting, but you can use either chromatic or ukulele, both will work okay. Um, the only difference is that if I were on the ukulele setting, right, see the way I'm tuning a C string? and I'm in more or less the right right area. The thing is, if I was to tune this all the way up so it goes higher and higher and higher and eventually it sounds like a C sharp note, it goes all the way to a different note just by tightening the string so much. And the ukulele tuner setting, it wouldn't show me that. It would just, it wouldn't show me C sharp. And if I went higher again, I could go all the way up to a D and it still wouldn't show me a D note. It would still be saying, you're just a really high C note. And that's a bunch of confusing information that's not really, it's not really very helpful. So I, I've seen beginners get confused by that. Um, and if what I just said was confusing, that kind of proves my point. Um, it's a bit of a lofty concept. Um, so you can avoid that just by looking at the musical alphabet, making sure you're familiar with it, and then using the chromatic setting on your tuner. Okay, so that little C down there, the little C down the bottom. Okay, so that's how you would use your tuner. Um, I'm not sure if I actually got into showing you the uh, the next slide on that slideshow. So just let me do a screen share. Okay. Right, so the, um, yeah, so this here, what I was talking about a minute ago was if I was to, actually I'll use C as an example, it's a little bit easier to understand. If you were hitting your C string, and if you tightened that string so much, the sound would go higher, higher, like you're too high, you're above C, and it would eventually become a C sharp note. You would have drifted into the territory of a whole new note, except it would still, you'd still be playing it open, but it would sound like this guy. Now that would be what's called out of tune. So you've tuned your string to a different note. So it sounds wrong. And everything you play on the instrument will sound wrong. So this is something that if you don't understand the musical alphabet before you go to tune, you can get trapped in this. So you could have tuned your instrument so that it, so that this note that's supposed to be a C is actually a C sharp or, some, or something, it could be anything. 
the C, it could actually be a C sharp at the moment. So you're hitting it open here, but it sounds like a C sharp. That could happen to all the strings and you could be completely out of tune and totally lost. And the thing is, if you didn't understand the alphabet or your tuning notes, these guys, then the tuner is not gonna help you. So you could be lost. You could be hitting away a C sharp note and it's just going, yay, you're in tune on a C sharp. <laughs> um, and you wouldn't know what's happening, but you've tuned it to the wrong notes. So a lot of beginners get trapped in that, particularly if they've just bought a ukulele. So if you just buy one, particularly online, they often ship with the strings relaxed. So your strings have been loosened, basically so in the airplane going up in the air and coming back down, temperature change, compression, decompression, all that stuff, that it, the neck doesn't break or the instrument doesn't break, like the, so the bridge doesn't pop off or anything like that. Because the, the instrument can expand and contract if it goes into extreme heat or extreme cold. Uh, the wood, it's a wooden instrument, so it breathes um, and it can break. So they tend to ship them with the strings relaxed. Um, now this means that it's really out of tune when you get the instrument. And in that instance, you might need a person who already plays the instrument to tune it up to the correct notes for you. Don't be worried about that. If you have a friend who plays the instrument, feel free to contact them and to let them know that you need help with this, just getting set up at the start. Most people will be pretty happy to help you. Um, but now that you understand things like the musical alphabet, what notes the instrument is supposed to be tuned to, um, this will help you figure that out. Right, so before I move on, um, I'm just gonna check. Right, so on, um, on the ukulele, or sorry, on most instruments, they would normally be laid out in a way that goes from low to high. So most of you guys have probably played around with a piano at some point in your life. Just either just messed around or maybe some of you actually play it. But you'll be familiar with this basic mechanism of the piano, where if you go all the way to the left hand side, this would be a low note. And each key would go a little bit higher in pitch until you reach the right hand side of the piano and that would be the highest note on the piano so left would be lowest right would be highest and you would just go up one note at a time from left to right now it does repeat the alphabet over and over and over again so this is a piano is quite an intuitive instrument in terms of pitch because basically the left hand side is low the right hand side is high but stringed instruments aren't quite that simple. There are two kinds of tunings on most ukuleles. So you can, well, I should probably be upfront in that I reckon about 90% of ukes are all tuned the same way. Most of them have this, uh, what's called a high G string. So they have this rather unusual tuning. On most things like a guitar or basses and things like that, the string that's nearest to you would be the lowest and it would go higher, 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 higher. But ukulele is very strange in that the string that's nearest to you isn't the lowest string. So you have this strangely offset tuning of the high G low C, higher E, and the high A. So it's weird, it's laid out very strangely. And I'd say about 90% of ukuleles are strung this way. But there is a little subsection, ones that use a low G. And the low G, it's still a G. It'll still, all the chords will still stay the same in terms of how you play them and everything like that but it's just going to sound lower on that fourth string. So this is gonna sound low when I hit the fourth string. Now 
OK. And you can look at this slide to see how you can tell them apart. So the high G string, which would be the most common one, has a really thin fourth string. So you can probably compare it to the C string. See how that one's thinner than that one? So your G string will be thinner than your C string. Now most ukuleles will be strung this way. And the odds are, if you're playing one of the low Gs, you probably bought it on purpose. So you probably know it's a low G. And you can see on the low G, there's a really thick low G string. So it's thicker than the C string. So that would be one of the requirements to tune a ukulele with a low G string. You also sometimes have to do a little bit of work up here to, to widen the nut slot. So leave that one to the professionals. Um, don't go taking a hacksaw out of your uke. Um, yeah, but that's what a low G sounds like. It's The chords are mostly, the, everything is mostly the same. All right. So the lowest note on your instrument then depends on which type of ukulele are you playing. So are you playing the high G, which would be the normal one? Okay, in that case, then your C string will be your lowest note because your fourth string is really high. So that's your lowest note on the uke if you're playing a, a high G. But if you're playing a low G, then, then your fourth string is your lowest note. Okay. Right. So this is what it would look like if you played your lowest note on the high G ukulele and you worked your way up the alphabet. Now the alphabet would continue all the way along that string if you kept going. But the thing is, eventually you're gonna bump into the same note as your higher sounding string. So if we were to play up along the third string, starting all the way down at zero, down at C. Now if we played C, C sharp, D, D sharp, if we were to hit the fourth fret, that would actually be a D, uh, sorry, that would actually be an E note. And the E note would be the same as if we played the next string down open. So if we were trying to play from our lowest note to our highest note, we wouldn't bother playing this note here. We would just change string and go all the way back to zero. And that would give us the E note. And then we'd go F, F sharp, G, G sharp. And if we were to play the fifth fret here, that would be an A note, but we're not gonna bother doing that. We're just gonna change string and go all the way back to zero. And that's where the A note is. And from there, we just go all the way up the neck all the way to the top, depending how long your, the neck is on your ukulele, and whatever your highest note is, that's your highest note. So we would start here and go C, C sharp, D, D sharp, change string, E, F, F sharp, G, G sharp, change string, A, A sharp, B, C, C sharp, D, D sharp, E, F, F sharp, G, G sharp, A. So. You can play around with that if you want to get used to your instrument going from the bottom all the way up to the top. Now, if you're playing a low G, it would look a little bit different. You would have your G note and you'd go G, G sharp, A, A sharp, B. And then you would change string. C, C sharp, D, D sharp, change string. E, F, F sharp, G, G sharp, change string. A, and then all the way up to the top. To your highest note. So if that that's what looking that's what going from your lowest note to your highest note would look like if you're playing a low G ukulele. Alright. So that's as far as I'm gonna take it right now, but I might pick it up later and come back to you guys and finish off this lesson. Okay. Thanks guys. See you later.